Hello guys and welcome back to this new episode. Today we are going to discuss about um, burying bodies and corpses and so different types of burials. So we understand different types of burials, right? Um, we have entombment when um, the dead body is buried underground. We have burials at sea um, that can be practiced in the Anglican religion. Of course, we have cremation, which is very known as a Buddhist practice, and it's a practice that um, is uh, um, uh, an extent uh, throughout and across um, Asia. We do have uh, burials out in the open, as we shall see, and then we have other types of burials, like the, um, that practiced by the um, Yanomani. And uh, Yanomani are um, a tribe, or is a tribe that uh, uh, practices. Um, cannibalism and cannibalism means basically that uh, they do eat um, the ashes of their um, dead bodies and uh, um, that is done in order to preserve um, the memory and the body itself of the dead um, within the body of the Yanomani members. Let's also not forget the practices of embalming bodies and mummifying them, right? Uh, which were uh, very well known in ancient Egypt. However, let's go straight to the point because we do have to get to it. And let's examine the history of uh, funerary practices. The first point uh, that we're going to start with is that of an ancient society, not the Egyptian one that you guys see here, but that of the Dilmun. Uh, Four thousand years ago, Dilmun uh, were um, excavating mounds um, in the sand and um, dead bodies were buried on the sand. And that remains very visible if you guys have visited Bahrain, right? Where you actually can see out in the open these mounds um, um, where, buried, where um, bodies were buried. Then let's go to the second point. Other weird or somewhat weird tradition, not weird at the time, for instance, the Maya would put a pentacle in the mouth of the dead body so that it could have at all times some food. But actually, today, we are going to dwell in uh, some sort of depth um, into other uh, funerary practices um, belonging to other uh, religions, societies, and so on and so forth. That that you guys see here in this picture is our third important mention, that of the burial at in the open. It is a type of burial that is still practiced in Tibet, where the body uh, gets um, carried um, up um, to the peak of a mountain and where like the people uh, of the tribe and so on and so forth, the relatives for instance, will pray for the um, birds and specifically for vultures to come to arrive and eat, devour um, the body, right? Because the more birds uh, and the faster is the process of um, uh, returning the body to the earth, the better it is. It is of good um, um, omen and therefore that is very auspicable. This is a very important process and that underscores the transient um, nature of life. Uh, the very transient nature where the soul finally can move away from the body that has been imprisoned, the soul of the, the dead at this point, right? And it is a, a practice of extremely important for a couple of reasons. First of all, because it happens in a way that the body gets returned, uh, like the Bible says, uh, ashes to the ashes, right? It gets returned to Mother Earth, right? Nothing gets, um, you know, wasted or preserved, right? Everything belongs to Mother Earth. But second of all, it is so important because it happens so naturally, right? Where um, the family and the relatives will chant um, all night long um, until the body is completely disappeared. 
It also does not involve any form of touching, which is very important in burials out in the open. And it's not the only type of burial out in the open, as we might think. Indeed, in Iran, we might uh, see these um, uh, silent uh, towers or uh, towers of silence known as dakma, um, where body uh, or bodies were left there um, to um, um, to um, enter the stage, the phase of uh, the composition. Right now, uh, touching the body um, constituted uh, um, yasht. Um, so it was blasphemous to touch the body, blasphemous for um, the body to enter in contact with other elements so there is a um, the land the sand uh, where the body uh, lays but uh, uh, nobody could touch it nobody could uh, um, actually uh, get that close because um, that is um, the skin um, constituted in certain traditions this border uh, from um, this border that separates um, external world from internal inner world, right? And uh, um, as such, the skin was the absolute border not to cross. And this is particularly relevant in, in some traditions, for instance, that of Sufi um, and uh, Sufism um, in the Middle Ages, but also in other traditions. So it is absolutely blasphemy to cross that kind of boundary. And so there must be this form of separation, this form of compartmentalization where um, we have the body and then the external world. And this separation um, must be respected in its totality. And then we have something that is kind of in the middle that is not a burial out in the open, but it's also not on the ground. And that is um, present in the Hinduistic um, tradition, in the Hindu tradition of uh, funeral um, or funerary um, ghats, uh, where um, the other is uh, the other that you can imagine. We also know that there is a huge city that are Varanasi, uh, where there are um, dead bodies uh, burning uh, basically every single every single day and um, uh, this is an important tradition that is um, in the middle uh, between what is a mixture of different traditions. In fact, what we have here is that the body is first wrapped up in um, um, fabrics that are um, uh, colored um, or very colored. They have uh, uh, this flamboyant uh, colors and then the body so uh, gets uh, um, into the Ganges so into the water it stays there for for a little while and then it gets picked up again and put back on the pair and um, this is important uh, because here uh, the body is um, burnt um, and until basically it is cremated and it's a fascinating uh, sort of tradition where uh, all the parents witness uh, um, this long uh, ritual that will um, reduce the body to ashes and naturally to um, protect and to disguise and to mask the other of uh, the burning body, uh, they will use uh, certain other others, uh, very positive, such as uh, that of incense. And then finally, the last passage would be um, to throw into the water back again the ashes of the dead. And so here we have a mixture of uh, um, burials, right, uh, involving fire, involving burials at sea, involving also, um, you know, uh, the um, uh, body uh, being um, uh, being uh, somehow not touched uh, directly, right, in the sense that it's wrapped up in uh, this uh, um, beautiful um, um, Fabrics. And the burial at sea is anyway also an important component in other traditions. Asian traditions as well, for instance um, Hong Kong. 
In Hong Kong, a burial underground can cost up to um, six hundred forty thousand dollars right um, and so that is because um, basically there is not enough space um, to do that and uh, um, uh, therefore the, the space um, uh, for the um, tomb is uh, very limited uh, restricted to I think a few parks they have and therefore the uh, government itself encourages people uh, to have burials at sea and so to throw the ashes um, into the water and this type of burial is known as a green burial uh, we also know that uh, there is an, another option a new recent option that is under construction that of a floating cemetery, cemetery. Um, the uh, studio that is um, projecting and realizing this uh, um, architectonic infrastructure if you like is a, a studio based in London um, that will contain um, 300 uh, 70,000 um, uh, urns um, now uh, definitely there's that option the most common one that remains the green burial um, where you could go uh, to one of the 11 parks and actually just there uh, disperse um, somehow uh, the ashes otherwise um, throwing them um, into uh, the sea uh, would remain the option number one preferred by people in Hong Kong also because of the cost uh, that that entails. So and tradition number six in our list is uh, uh, known as Fama Diana. It's this idea that um, is very far off from our way of living and our way, uh, Western way of perceiving death as a painful and uh, traumatizing uh, event um, that uh, uh, um, requires a very somber tone. It's this idea that the bodies can be exhumed and actually the there's going to be a dance that is exactly the concept of Fama Diana, a dance with the dead. Um, now, think about how you would react to the idea of exhuming somebody you actually loved or cared about. Certainly uh, not in a very positive way, but in this tradition, they actually do that and way more. So what is it? Um, that they do. They um, change the clothing first of all and they turn them um, upside down so if they are laying um, standing with their belly up their face up they're gonna be turned um, the other way around. They do this um, after five or seven years. I am not very sure of why uh, five or seven years what would that depend on or what is the tradition behind um, this type of numbers but they do that and then um, they dance basically they bring the um, uh, cadaver uh, the um, dead person out and um, they dance and then they lay him or her to rest for life if we can say so um, and so that is what happens with this um, Fama Diana tradition so this seems a rite of passage where the dead person actually um, has uh, um, undergone a period of limbo and now can finally ascend to um, the um, to heavens, right? And so to the real afterworld and can rest in peace because everything has been accomplished and now you can go ahead and climb up uh, the ladder of heavens. So once basically the um, uh, tomb is sealed, nobody can touch it anymore. And so that's uh, that and uh, they're over and again there's this uh, eternal peace, right? And it's something surprising because we always see um, death in, in Western culture as uh, something uh, dreary. Um, but here we have actually a celebration of what that means. Now, with that being said, um, let's go to our next culture, that is that of uh, Ga and what happens in this tradition. 
The so-called Ga culture is a culture that is present in Ghana and is very well known because they make uh, fantasy coffins. Now, fantasy coffins are those coffins um, and there's a famous guy on Instagram known as Papa Joe that you guys see here in the picture. And those are coffins that represent the um, job or the um, most ideal um, uh, to which um, these people, the dad, um, has aspired in his life, right? So they represent something that is very important to them, uh, or an idea that they had, or a passion that they had. Um, anyway, something that is very representative of them, right? And so they make these coffins which by the way are absolutely huge, right? Sometimes are absolutely huge, sometimes are just for urns, right? But uh, they do make these fantasy coffins and uh, it is being said that, the, um, that even the president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, had ordered not one, but actually two um, coffins. And so this, uh, guys, is something quite relevant. So the fantasy coffins, as you guys can see here in these pictures and as the name suggests, are very, um, um, very beautiful, right? So we can go from um, uh, tennis shoes to um, sailing boats to uh, a piano to whatever we like to even fishes, which is like crazy, right? So um, with that being said, let's go though to another tradition that of the Igorot and we are in the Philippines and in the Philippines what they do is that the uh, old people the elderly will build their own um, coffins they are very simple made of wood and they just would be erected um, up to a cliff left them hanging but what happens here and here you guys see a picture is very interesting there are two rituals here that we're going to discuss now, ritual number one is that basically the um, dad um, gets tied up to a chair and the people, the people of the community start dancing around uh, this person, right? And uh, um, tradition number two is that uh, once, you know, this uh, first uh, ritual um, is over, then they go and uh, lay the uh, man, the person in the, in the coffin, they... Um, then they wait underneath the coffin remember that the coffin is um, hanging from a cliff and then they wait uh, there basically uh, waiting for something very specific which is uh, um, drips of uh, liquids emitted by the dead body now um, I don't know how to comment this because this is a quite a brutal image for us um, for the Western culture that you would wait for liquids to come to come out from a dead body definitely not a pleasant image to think of at night um, or during the day for that matter but anyway this is what happens so guys at this point let me know what you think let me know what um, you um, think of these traditions let me know which one you prefer which one you find the most brutal for instance um, let me know if you didn't know um, any of this so comment comment below um, looking forward to um, seeing and reading all your messages and to have a discussion with you all on um, practices of funerary rituals i'll see you guys next time with a new episode don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like the video and comment below bye